Hello everybody. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And as everybody remembers, I went and uh, restored this cabinet and turned it into a gun cabinet. And it turned out pretty nice. I got my handles. Deer horn. They're fake deer horn handles. But uh, I wanted to give you guys a tour of the Bison gun cabinet. So, y'all ready? We have the inside of the bison gun cabinet. And it's lighted. I've got two switches up here to light it all up and it serves as a night light when I'm scared at night. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I wanted to give you a tour. I've got 12 guns in here, and every one of them I have bought with my own money. So my reviews on these guns are me letting you know what is wrong and what's not wrong with them because you want to decide whether to get a good gun or a bad gun. So I'm going to show you all my guns, and we're going to pull them out one at a time, and I'll give you a little story about each one of them. We'll try. <laughs> so let's get started. Gun number one. Well, you know what? Let's start with the very first PCP. That would be the Benjamin Discovery. This is the Benjamin Discovery. Uh, when I got it, it looked like this. And I made this stock out of a piece of plywood, a bad piece of plywood at that. And even a bad piece of plywood turned out pretty daggone nice, if you ask me. <laughs> uh, and it all happened by accident. You know, uh, I started off with it just cleared. Well, I had a few bad spots in it where I had to fill it with putty to make it right because the plywood I had had a bunch of voids in it. So it, start, it showed them lines. And now every place you see red, there was a line. So I decided to uh, put red putty on it, or actually I painted it black first, and then I put the uh, red putty on it last after I sanded, and then I just sanded it until it looked like this, and the red spots covers every place that was a bad spot, <laughs> and it turned out pretty daggone nice if you ask me. And I replaced the trigger guard on it, or the trigger assembly, with an aluminum. Uh, I got that from um, uh, Magnum Power. And uh, check it out if you need one for your discovery. It's a real nice trigger. Uh, but anyway, I just cut the tip off of it and put two dowel pins in it, made it so that the dowel pin would uh, hold it together. And then I put a piece of plastic in the middle of it and drilled holes in it for the dowel pins and put it on there and then glued it all together. Put glue in the dowel pins down here, dowel pins up here, and glue on each side of the white part, the plastic. And then to strengthen it, I put a Picatinny rail on there, an M-lock rail that's, I think, four inches. And I made this, I was, I was, this was my first suppressor, and it used to have heat shrink on it, and it just kept loosening the heat shrink up because the air was coming out of here so hard that it was actually making the uh, uh, shrink I had on it slide off 
more and more. <laughs> so I just finally took it off and said to hell with it. It looks pretty good like that. Uh, between the aluminum down here, the aluminum here, and aluminum here, it kind of evens itself out. So I got this one from Pyramid Air. No, I didn't. I got it from uh, a gun shop in Winston-Salem. So I ordered it through them. They probably got it from Pyramid Air. <laughs> Alright, so then the second one I got was the Umarex Gauntlet 1. And I built the stock on this one. I've got a video of that. That was a pretty nice build. I did uh, strengthen the, uh, uh, put a pin in it. And you can't even tell there was ever a pin put in there because I put it in from the top. I got a video on how to do that too. Um, and all I did was just took some wormy chestnut and uh, carved that. And I wanted to keep the same shape down here as the original gauntlet so it still kept its you know its name it's the gauntlet so uh anyway then i made two barrel bands for it and it's got the clip holder so i can put my extra clip in there just like so and voila you got an extra clip in there this squeeze fit and um It turned it into a heavier gun, but I mainly use this for bench shooting anyway, so uh, this is my long range bench shooter. It's in 25 cal. Uh, the Benjamin Discovery is in a 22 cal. Alright, so then uh, the next one was a Dragon Claw, which I've sold. Um, so then, I guess the next one would have been uh, the Diana Storm Riders. This one's the 22 caliber, and I really haven't done much to it except for add an M lock, about a three inch M lock on it, and then I put wrap on the uh, suppressor, and then I added a uh, mount so that I can turn that any way I want to put a flashlight here or up on top or whatever. And it's just, it clamps on there just like that and I can turn that any position I want. And um, depending on how you put your scope rings, you could probably fit two of them on it. So uh, I thought that was a pretty good addition to this one because I use this one for night frog hunting because i'm telling you they are bad here there's a certain time of the year you can't walk out of your house without stepping on one and then i just did the tagger stripes on it with uh, a stencil i made and just laid the stencil on it every so often and just sprayed the green and uh, it turned out pretty nice and that's a 22 cal and I got that one and this one at the same time. This is the Diana Storm Rider 177. And both of these are very good shooters. Uh, I've never had a problem. These are a pleasure to freaking carry in the woods too. So these are my hunting 22s. Or 177. Alright, well then the next one I got would have been the Challenger 357. This one's the one that I did the electric on and burnt all these veins in it. And uh, that turned out to be a pretty nice stock. And uh, 
I just polished the crap out of it. And uh, all my guns are stock. I don't do anything special to them. And they shoot just fine for me for what I need them for. And uh, I got this one from AEA. Uh, actually, I got it from uh, Zach, but uh, he wouldn't answer me back when I needed help on it because as soon as I got it, it was. There was two things wrong with it, and I can't remember what it was, but I ended up sending it to Pete at AEA Northeast, and he uh, he warranted it for me, just like I had bought it from him, and he won me as a customer that day. So then I got, well, I got the uh, 30 plus first, and then I traded it back for this because I just, wasn't into that. This is the 30 caliber Challenger first generation. And I 3D printed the stock for this one. And these are just sitting there temporary. They usually go up here on the side, but uh, they get too close to my gun stock in there that uh, Challenger 357, and I don't want them putting marks on the side of my. So I put them on the end while I've got them in the gun cabinet. And I printed out the trigger guard, the block, the Picatinny rail, the uh, clip holders, the grip, and then this has got a Cattleman T2 stock, a uh, folding stock. This one folds. And uh, and it's got one of my suppressors on it. No, I don't make them from nobody else. I make them for me because I know that they're going to be used on an air rifle. So then I made this adapter that just screws down on there. And that thing sure has long threads. But I just took and made one of these to transition the suppressor see it's big enough to go over the barrel so far so it kind of hides that end so then it's it threads on there because it's got threads in it and once it bottoms out and you can also use that as a um, jam nut too if you have one that needs to be in a direction that you want so this one doesn't matter because it's uniform all the way around so either way you put it it's still the same thing and uh, this has just got the original cones that were in this because it had a shroud on it I took the shroud off and uh, I just took the cones out of the suppressor that was in it there was, I think there was like eight of them in there and they fit this uh, Yong Hing compressor filter that you can get in blue, yellow, I think you can get them in red. I chose the black one and I just threaded the ends to fit the uh, gun, drilled the end out of it and uh, one of these is reversible. It's for a uh, 357 or a half 20 for like a 25 so this one can be used on the 25 or the 357 so it's universal this side here is quarter 20 threads and then I machined a cocking knob for it and It's all my scopes are big scopes. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, six by twenty-four by fifty. Uh, lighted reticle, which I never use. I don't even know why I need bothered needing it. So then, I 
some of these are hard to get in the cradle. So then the next one I got was the Gauntlet 2. Yeah, the Gauntlet 2. And this is the one I just did a video on, uh, converting my old stock that I made originally for the gun that I built that was, started out to be a flop. Uh, so I just uh, fitted it to this right here by 3D printing a, uh, a cradle that this would set down in plus it would set down in the big big hole because this hole was too wide for this tube so i just 3d printed a pocket for it to set in and uh worked out pretty nice and uh, this is another one i built another stock yes it's a heavy one <laughs> And then I put the wrap on the bottle and the barrel on this because I had enough room. Some of my guns I can't do that to. I can only get it on one because there's not enough room between them because just putting this together is two millimeters. So you're adding two millimeters to your uh, tank. All right. Yes, they're all shooters. I don't have guns that ain't shooters. If I get one that ain't a shooter, I send it back. All right, so then I got the, I don't know. This one's the one everybody's been waiting for. Then we got the Air Venturi Avenger 25 caliber. And I built the stock for this one too on my videos so you all can check those out just come back you can see all these that I've done and I just made them out of a piece of aluminum it's just flat aluminum and then I made a piece of wood wormy chestnut and yes this one's pinned too I got a pin going through it and um, I just used boiled linseed oil on the wormy chestnut. I made it so that the cheek rest is adjustable up and down. The butt pad, it's adjustable in and out. And I got two set screws to set screw both of those so they don't move. And Then I put a uh, sling stud, Picatinny rail on it. And I made the uh, trigger guard. And I'm gonna tell you, this is my favorite shooter. This one always, always hits what it's what I'm pointed at. If that crosshair is on him, it, he's gone. <laughs> That's all there is to it. <laughs> You ain't getting away from this gun. This gun is badass. Uh, this is probably... This would probably be my favorite gun yet. And it's still not too heavy that I can take it out in the woods and uh, hunt with it. You know, it's, it's going to have a little weight taken off. Because these things here ain't light. I also made the clip holders for this and yes all my guns are loaded and ready they're all loaded all right then the next one i got was the y'all keeping count because <laughs> i'm not then we got the beaming chief now this one here i was just I was buying it because I wanted to take and turn it into a pistol and make it look like an adamant. But it's only a 177. If it was 22, yeah, I could probably push myself to do it. And I can do it. It's just, uh, takes a little time. <laughs> so, you just have to shorten this tube right here and then duplicate these holes and move everything up into this tube so 
same thing with the breech and the barrel and everything because then the breech will move up here and then the barrel will move up here and then you cut your barrel down to the size you want 3d print you a thing that looks like the uh adamant and uh make you a grip you pretty much uh, got an adamant <laughs> just a 177 uh, so then i put one of my uh 3d printed suppressors the uh ss and uh this thing works pretty nice but I, this one here i don't hardly ever shoot uh I just got too many other badasses that I like shooting. So. Uh, if if I was to get rid of one, it would probably be that one. Uh, so then the next one I got was the Pro. The, the Pro 30. Yeah, she's a shooter. Uh, she's a Donna. <laughs> and she is sexy uh, I got my own cheek rest on it which I need to put some washers underneath this side so I haven't printed them yet uh, I'm going to print some nice fancy uh, washers that are tapered to go underneath these because the screws are 2 millimeters too long so I need to make two three millimeter uh, washers to go underneath each side. Right now I've just got regular silver washers and it looks tacky so I'm going to change that. Uh, and I've got another cheek rest or butt pad that's going to go over top of this but I'll have to 3D print another end. And I guess things long. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to put another pad on it. And I'll give you an idea on the last gun I got of what I'm talking about. So I just put some uh, wrap around the cocking wheel, around the grip, around the scope. And this one does have a T-Eagle. Uh, and it's a 40 power, I believe. I can't remember. That doesn't say, it just says T-Eagle. So I can't remember what this is. I think it's covered up underneath the, uh, thing here. The basil. So, it's got a sunshade on it, and it actually pr looks pretty good on this gun. Uh, so then I wrap the barrel, and I wrap the tank. Now, I could have, if I'd have took this apart, I could have wrapped the whole gun, uh, or the whole tube, but I don't like messing with stuff like that. Uh, if it's working, don't, don't tempt fate. <laughs> so, I just went up to the back of this gauge here, and it went underneath of it, so, uh, I'm thinking about making a new, uh, band for this. And I think we're going to take this wrap off and rewrap it all the way to the end because right now it's just wrapped to here. So I'm thinking about putting one of these on it. But I have to redesign it. Um, because the width between the barrel and the tank is way smaller than the width on that one. So I don't know if this will work. Uh, the only way it would work is if I took the wrap off the barrel and I really don't want to do that So I think I'm gonna might just leave it the way that I think I just talked myself out of it uh, But anyway, uh, I'll show you that there in a minute But this is a good shooter too. I got this one from AEA Northeast uh, Pete and uh, It's a good little gun All right, and last but not least, nope, 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 nope. Got one more. The Benjamin Marauder Sam I have been wanting for a long time <laughs> in a wooden stock. And 
I do like this dock. I like the way it's got the point out there on the end. I like the checkering on it. Although I had to get into the checkering. Well, actually, I think that's just a stamp. Uh, this over here is checkering. It's just digitally done. It's not handmade checkering. Now, this would be something if it was handmade checkering. I'd love to find somebody to do that for me. Checker around here with the star. And, yeah, this needs to be checkered <laughs> and redone. But it's a nice-looking stock as it is. Uh, I just took a uh, Marauder that, for the first generation and redesigned it to fit this. I 3D printed the uh, trigger guard, which I think I'm going to do another one because I think I want to make less room between the bottom of that trigger and the top of this housing. So I want to shorten that down because I don't want that much room between it. So I'm going to shorten this down a little bit. One day, and then I put an M-lock rail on it, four, four inch one, and I put some wrap on the just the uh, cap and <laughs> I found this I put one of my screw on barrel brakes on it and this was on a tripod that you click and you pull the aluminum thing and it always they had these rubber grips around it well I took one of those because I took one of them things apart because it was just destroyed the uh, legs were bent and everything, so I robbed all the parts off of it, hardware. And I had a bunch of these uh, grips that I had taken off of the aluminum, because I used them for something else, I'm sure. And I just stuck it on there, and it actually fit. So I said, well, shit, that looks pretty decent. <laughs> and, yeah, it's got holes in it, but these are the only holes that's in that barrel brake. And this thing is a freaking awesome to shoot. No cocking. You just shoot until you're done shooting. Till you're out of pellets. Which is very frequent. <laughs> uh, got that one from Pyramid Air. And then the last one we got was from Pete at AEA Northeast and this is the M50 and I went crazy on this wrap on this one too <laughs> I like that wrap that wrap just makes a gun look warm and inviting you know hey man I want to be touched I'll make you feel good for touching it that's what that gun's saying so, you know, you got to make that gun talk to you, man. And when she sings, your belly gets full. <laughs> but I wrapped the homemade suppressor. This is another one that uh, one of my subscribers actually uh, sent me because uh, he couldn't use it or did, found something different. I can't remember what it was, but... Um, I went ahead and bored each cone that was in it to uh, 5 eighths um, and I haven't tried it yet. We're going to find out because I'm going to review this one again. Uh, by the way, my next review I'm hoping is going to be on the uh, Avenger 25. If it had been nice, I'd have probably already done it. But anyway, this is just on there temporary, and I'm not sure if maybe I might just leave both of them on there together. Uh, that actually doesn't look bad. This one's screwed down. It's got, I, print, I printed this, but I had to print mine a different size because I've got the uh, wrap on it. I'm working on some that you can put on the stock tank. So, let's see how that works. We're still experimenting with it. 
uh, I want to make sure that they're strong before I send them to anybody. Uh, we don't want to waste each other's time. But anyway, it's got a four inch, I think, four inch uh, M lock rail on it, screwed on to the block that is actually 3D printed with the uh, band. And on the inside, I have one set screw in the center, one set screw in the end, and one set screw in this end. And you put those set screws in, you tighten it down where you want it, and then you put your M-lock on it. Uh, my, these will be sold without the M-lock. You're going to have to get your own M-lock when I do start selling them. So, you know, I'm just selling you the band. Uh, and yes, you'll have to trim your own band. If I have to trim them, I'm going to have to raise the price. <laughs> They're already too expensive. So, then I put a Bison M50 on it. And I actually think it wouldn't look bad with a third one on it. It actually looks pretty cool like that, but uh, I think I'm going to keep this because that's the place where I'm going to be having my hand when I'm carrying it. It kind of gives my hand a cradle, and it's right in the middle, so my gun is balanced. So I think I'm going to leave well enough alone. I deleted the hinge on it, and I put the butt pad on it. All it is is just a cover, but I had to 3D print my block so now watch me not be able to get it back on but it just slips on but i got another one coming so i'm probably gonna have to 3d print another uh block because it's probably gonna be a different size so yeah again i went crazy with the wrap uh and she's just as sexy as uh the pro this this is actually probably the man. <laughs> uh, something moved there. What moved? Oh, I don't have my set screws set. I went and moved that the other day. I had to move it out because when I set it in there, the suppressor was right in the middle of the hole, and the hole's not big enough for the suppressor. So I had to raise it so it would land here instead of up here. So... It's still okay. I can still, uh, I can hit that damn, uh, center of that scope quickly. So, I just used regular, uh, like fishing pole wrap. That's what it's under, fish, fishing pole, uh, grip wrap. And you can get it in all different colors. You can get it in red, you can get it in yellow, blue, green black but i like black i like everything dark i'm a dark man <laughs> and then we got the gauntlet two stock that just sitting here waiting for a customer to buy it so somebody out there might like this uh, you get all the hardware with it and the new uh g2 bison uh, cheek rest and uh, it's for sale on my site so check it out guys if you guys want it but right now it's got a home right here where it's safe for you guys so it's not getting hurt and I can't remember how I had that now there's how I had it anyway then i put uh just regular sling studs i bought a pack of like 10 or 20 of them and i just uh put sling studs there so that on each side and now i need one more uh i need one more to fill this one right here so uh this one here I made I made that one kind of looks all rustic it's reversible you can have it like that or you can have it like that 
I usually have it like that. Uh, I had it backwards. But I just made that out of some uh, 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 shit. duffel bag straps that was off of some different duffel bags and just used uh, those uh, screws. It's got a nut. One side's a nut and the other side's a screw and it squeezes it together. But that one I made. And this one I made. Made that out of a leather belt. I wish it would have been total leather, but I think it's got some padding on the back that's starting to come loose. <laughs> but, oh well. It's, it's one of those uh, in a pinch straps. So it hardly ever gets used. Plus it's not very comfortable. It ain't got no padding. <laughs> and when you get to be my age, you, you, you start wanting padding on your body. So, then I got, this one's my very first one. I've had this one for the longest. Uh, you can't hardly find these anymore. And if you do, they're very expensive. Uh, then I got these. I, well, actually, I'm missing one. I'm missing a brown one. Uh, huh, I'm missing a brown one because I got a brown one just like that. Uh, maybe it's out there at the other gun cabinet where I work used to be. <laughs> but that's Bison's gun cabinet. Uh, got all my pellet magazines right where each gun goes because each one of them got their own home. And then I'll just throw every one of those uh, silica packs that comes out of my 3D printer filament. Because each one has one of these in it to keep it dry in there. Well, you want your gun cabinet to be dry too. So I just throw them in the back here. I've got a whole crap load of them back here. I'm just going to put them in a bucket or something or some kind of a fancy I might even 3d print a little vase to go down in there and put those in it coffee can with a little bit of camouflage wrapped around it that'll look pretty damn good <laughs> so then I got this bad boy this is one of them uh, leg holsters that goes right there and That's for my next pistol if I ever get another one or build one. I don't know, man. That's a lot of work. But anyway, that is the uh, Bison gun cabinet. And I know this was a long video, but tough it out, guys. I sure had to. Anyway. Uh, let's see. I made all my suppressors. Uh, this one here is a homemade one. That's the one I, one of the ones I 3D printed. It's on the, uh, uh, this was actually the very original, uh, suppressor. And it's been a good one. So then I made the barrel break. For the M50. Let me show you that. So we have the suppressor that I can't get off. I always have a hard time with that one. I gotta make a lock nut for it so that I can position it in the position that I want it to be in so you got to be real careful with plastic and metal if you use the cross thread it or even start cross threading it it's going to always want to travel that way so then you have to work extra hard to 
straighten them back up but there's always going to be a problem with that beginning thread because you've already destroyed it so all the way you can see that this is supposed to be up top it won't go no further so I'd have to get me a jam nut and that's why it's not on there and put that on there just like that and imagine that it's straight too man I never have an issue with my threads when I'm doing it uh, but that's my guns but we're going to test this out next time and we're going to show you that too I think when I do that review now I'm waiting on pellets or slugs so that's another announcement that needs to be made I got some uh, slugs coming for the 50 now I can't do I'm not going to do the review on it again until I get the new slugs and we're going to try three different slugs and uh, right now I've got uh, a guy working on it uh, I'll put a link to his page uh, he's Ray Wolf and he is an awesome dude um, he's earned my respect <laughs> uh, in fact there's a story behind how I met him the other night I made a adapter to go into my uh, slug press and I ended up making it identical to the 50 cal or the 501 that I had so once you go too far you can't go no further uh, so it's you got to start all over so I'm not very good at hitting my mark I always go over and I don't anticipate things that I should be anticipating so uh, he told me he had a lead and I asked him if he would do a uh, boring job for me and bore that out to exactly uh, 495 because that's what that's what the uh, the 50 wants it wants a 495 so it's not a 50 cal it's a 495 <laughs> uh, I wish I'd just call it a 495 but anyway uh, you'll be hearing a lot about him from for a while uh, he's uh, special making a pellet that we designed and uh, we're going to see how they do uh, I'm going to test them out for him and we're going to use my re-review for the M50 to test them out on so the reason I'm doing a re-review is I just wasn't very happy with the results on that one. Uh, so I used the pellet or the slugs that I had because I had them for the 50 uh, Dragon Claw. And it shot those just fine. But this one doesn't, doesn't like them heavy slugs. Uh, this one needs a light slug. So... Uh, we've designed a uh, uh, 0.495 uh, round nose hollow point that we're shooting for about 240 grain. I think that the 240 grain will do just fine. So. Uh, we'll uh we'll see <laughs> uh i'll get her right i'll figure it out i know what, what's going to happen that thing needs a lighter slug and i just wasn't happy with the numbers so i decided this gun deserves a re-review because it didn't do it any justice uh simply because that was my fault 
it wasn't the gun's fault. Uh, it was my fault because I used what I had, and they just happened to be 496. So uh, that's what I used. So um, anyway, I think we'll get some better numbers the next time. Uh, we're hoping that we're going to get about uh, anywhere from 840 feet per second and shooting for about 300 and some, I think it was 309 foot pounds if we got them exact now it could be it could vary he might be able to get less weight or he might be able might have to do more weight but we're hoping it don't go past 240 because uh, that's where i want to stay i want to stay between 220 and 240 maybe even of 210 but uh and i do have some 210s and i got some 170 i think they're 175s that I got from Pyramid Air. I'm not impressed with Seneca's pellets or slugs. Um, they were all dinged up. They've been right around in the box and just beat each other to death and uh, no cushion in it whatsoever to keep them from moving around. And uh, it just dented them all to pieces. So, they look pretty rough. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to end this video because I'm probably boring you guys by this moment, by this time. Uh, tell me what you think, guys. Uh, I think I got some pretty nice looking guns. And it's a lot of work getting them that way. But by God, they ain't going to be here much longer. So I better get it all done now, right? <laughs> Uh, I've been planning this gun cabinet build for about a year and a half and finally got it done a few months ago so don't forget to like share comment subscribe you guys have a good one later